antibiotics may have saved countless lives, but overuse and misuse have led to the rise of superbugs. Now, these are bacteria resistant to the most powerful medications. So how can we prevent this? Here's Teresa Tang with more. Antibiotics. I'm pretty sure you've taken them at least once in your life. But do we really need antibiotics when we feel sick? And how are they linked to what's called superbugs? Now, it's important to remember that antibiotics only target bacteria and do not kill viruses. So, antibiotics will not work when you have the flu or the common cold because these are viral infections. What actually happens inside our bodies when we take antibiotics? Did you know each of us carry around at least one and a half kg of bacteria? They live in our hair, skin, gut, and lungs. They play a crucial role in maintaining many of our body's healthy characteristics. So when we take antibiotics, they target the true pathogens, or the bacteria that causes us harm and makes us sick. But at the same time, they also harm the healthy bacteria living inside us. This healthy bacteria gets damaged and mutates and slowly becomes resistant to these antibiotics. Take an elderly person in hospital with diabetes. They tend to have a lot of bacterial infections and the only way to fight these is, you guessed it, more antibiotics. Over time, the bacteria in the patient builds up so much resistance to many common antibiotics, it creates a superbug, which then needs more powerful antibiotics to treat. When superbugs spread from one person to another, this leads to antibiotic resistance in the community that slowly grows over time. It's a global problem. Superbugs are associated with close to 5 million deaths every year. How bad is the superbug problem now? It is a very serious problem. So in a recent study uh, where they took the global data um, and summarized them, this superbug problem has become the third killer in the world in terms of the number of deaths. Um, this is extremely prevalent, especially in Asia, and Singapore being at the center of e travels and economic hub, we are at high risk of this resistance being imported into Singapore, and that's what we are seeing, even in the community setting. So actually five or six years ago, we did a study in residents in Clementi. We found that one in four of them carried resistant bacteria in the gut without any symptoms, silently. It takes roughly 10 years and about 1 billion US dollars to discover a new antibiotic. In Singapore, there's a huge amount of effort being put into surveillance to detect the level of resistance in different bacteria in both hospital and community settings. There are diagnostic labs in hospitals to detect these infections early. Infection prevention and control measures also help to prevent the spread of these bacteria. We did a quick poll earlier to get a sense of how you feel about antibiotics. Most of you say that when you're feeling sick, you'd avoid antibiotics if possible. I think it's very heartening to see the results of this poll. Um, I think that's really changed from a few years ago where we communicated with the GPs and did surveys. And one of the key factors that drive them to prescribe antibiotics was actually demand from the patients. Mm. Even though today's talk has been emphasising on reducing unnecessary use of antibiotics, sometimes there are circumstances where we need antibiotics. There are still really important medications that can um, prevent complications down the line if we treat them early. Always have an open conversation with the GPs and discussing uh, things like, can we delay antibiotics for a while? How long do I need antibiotics for? And if you require diagnostics to differentiate viral versus bacterial infections.